dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus and I am the host of the Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the uh, blackbraziltoday.com blog, where I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. So let me just take you back a few days here. I think it was um, Friday morning, actually, I was headed to work. And I was, uh, as I was driving to, you know, I was headed to the freeway, I was actually uh, listening to some voice messages from a few friends back and forth. You know, there were a couple of them in Brazil, a couple of them, a couple of them here in the U.S. You know, I have, uh, you know, just friend contacts across the country. Um, and uh, one of my Brazilian friends, you know, we, we often had discussions about all, just, you know, all types of topics. You know, it might be, you know, Marxism, the influence of Marxism in the world, you know, his views on Brazilian women, uh, the issue of race in Brazil. You know, it, it's like me and this guy, we kick it about a lot of stuff. And for the most part, we agree with most of the stuff, but and we, we butt heads on a couple of a couple of topics. But, you know, that, I don't have a problem with that because. You know, as I've said before, you, you know, you have to be able to challenge what you believe, you know, and you get that when you're able to have debates and discussions with people who hold slightly different views than you do. So he started that morning off because he's he's one who doesn't agree with affirmative action quotas. You know, he believes that much of what's coming out of the black left these days is just like, uh, you know, playing the victim. You know, and I'm somewhere in the middle on that, you know, that I believe to a certain degree, you know, black folks have to take more accountability for some of the situations we're in. But, you know, then at the same time, I can't throw away at, uh, certain challenges that we get from society. So, you know, we, we go back and forth on that. And that particular morning, February 2nd, you know, I had just, you know, I had told my daughter that morning, you know, today is the, uh, the day of Iemanja. You know, Iemanja is considered the goddess of the water, goddess of the sea in the Yoruba religion. And as uh, in Brazil, you have this Candomblé religion, which is, you know, is loosely based on uh, the Yoruba religion. And so then, you know, when I was in my car driving to get to work that morning, the first text that I got from this friend in, uh, in Brazil, he says, you know, uh, a lot of black people would do well to follow examples by people like Gloria Maria, you know, somebody who's competent. She excelled at her job and she didn't need any, you know, any, you know, unnecessary help. You know, people should look to somebody like Gloria Maria, who unfortunately died today. And so I hadn't heard the news yet. Um, I knew that Gloria Maria had been diagnosed with cancer a few years ago. And the last few times I saw her, you could kind of tell that, I'm not gonna say she wasn't doing well, I'm just saying you could just tell from the way that she looked that, um, you know, it, it seemed like, you know, obviously cancer was was affecting her appearance. That's, that's just what I can say, that's how she appeared to me. And as you all know, uh, at the end of last year, I think December 30th or so, uh, you know, the great Pele died you know, of, of cancer also. So, you know, whenever I hear about these, uh, these deaths, you know, people passing on, you know, and then my connection with Brazil for the last 23 years, I always, you know, I have memories of these people. Um, you know, there was a time when I was living in Detroit where I had the global international television channel. So I could, you know, in my uh, my cable TV package, I could watch global TV from Detroit. And, you know, the first few times, you know, the several times that I was traveling to Brazil starting in the, two, the year 2000, I can just remember, you know, my first memories of Gloria Maria on global TV was her, I know she was a host on the Sunday evening journal known as Fantastico for a number of years. Um, you, you just didn't see, when I first started going to Brazil, you didn't see many black journalists on television. It's just, it's, it's no way to get around that. I've said for years that, 
I, I didn't coin this phrase, but some, I don't remember who, who said this or what article I read this from. But years ago, somebody said that Brazil was ruled by a dict dictatorship of whiteness. And when you looked at Brazilian TV, particularly 20 years ago, that's something that you, it was just very element, it, evident because you just didn't see many black faces on Brazilian TV. I remember some years ago, Spike Lee was going back and forth. Uh, from the States to, to Brazil, he was recording a documentary. I never got a chance to see that or if it even came out. I always wondered what happened to it. But, you know, Spike Lee clearly noticed that <laughs> you had a lack of black resilience on TV. Gl Claudia Maria was one of those people. Um, I don't know how I can what words I can use to, to give justice to. You know, just what she did. I mean, th there are very few women in the world who are going to reach the heights of, say, Oprah Winfrey, multi-billionaire, you know, a media mogul. But if there, if Brazil had an Oprah Winfrey, the closest they would come would be somebody like Gloria Maria. Um, you know, she. I just what I remember about Gloria Maria was she, it seemed like she was always traveling. She was always in some you know country across the world, you know, doing a report. I'm like, wow, that woman, I swear she's been to every country in the world. I, they say she, her passport had at least 100 stamps from different countries. Um, what else do I remember about her? I remember, I, I don't know if she, I don't think Gloria Maria ever got married, but I remember some years ago, maybe, I don't know, maybe a decade ago or so, she had adopted these two young black girls and she took them on as her, as her children. You know, I remember one particular year she was on the cover of Hassa Brazil magazine with her two daughters. You know, Hassa Brazil being um, the only magazine you're going to find in Brazil that's targeted at the black Brazilian population. Uh, what else do I remember? There's a famous video of Gloria Maria where she not I don't I, I don't want to say it wrong if if I'm quoting this wrong. I just say what I think. You know, we can verify this online, but it, it, uh, I remember that Michael Jackson had recorded his video for uh, They Don't Really Care About Us. I think it was in the 95 or 96. And Gloria Maria, they chose Gloria Maria to, uh, to interview Michael Jackson. She's interviewed Madonna. She's interviewed a number of celebrities. Um, from what I understand, I'm still trying to work this out. As I said just you know a few minutes ago, it was just rare to see black faces on Brazilian TV, particularly when I first started going there. And it said that uh, Gloria Maria was the first black journalist on Br Brazilian television. Now I'm not I'm not sure if that means all of t Brazilian television or just on, you know, arguably the the nation's top network, you know, Hedgy Global, you know, global television. But Gloria Maria opened up a lot of doors. There are just numerous black journalists on television now who were able to get to where they got because somebody like Gloria Maria opened a door to say, yeah, a black woman can be a journalist too. You know, a top, a highly paid, competent black journalist, you know, just some of the people that I'm familiar with now who, you know, 30 years ago, you would have never seen these people on television. You know, they just wouldn't give black women that particular chance to be on television. You know, as I've said in previous videos, uh, there seems to be a particular role that Brazil is comfortable with leaving for black women, whether they're on TV as maids or some type of sex object. But uh, Gloria Maria, she broke through that and she became one of the most visible, well-known journalists on Brazilian television. As I said, no one can really measure up to what Oprah Winfrey is, but Gloria Maria will be the closest thing in terms of a black woman uh, making it big on television, you know, uh, as a journalist, you know, from, from what I understand, uh, Gloria Maria at one point was making 300,000 reais per month. They say her fortune is estimated at about 50,000, 50 million reais, I'm sorry, about 50 million reais is, say, is, is what her fortune is supposed to be estimated as. So, you know, I think she was in journalism for 40 or 50 years. So she definitely left her mark on society. You see it from all of the emotional, uh, memories people you know famous brazilians are, are sharing you know adhering of her passing so i definitely had to speak a little bit about gloria maria you know her death comes a little more than a month after pele passed away so um these are some of the people that i first got to know when i started looking into okay brazil has a big black population 
but you know, let me get to know some of these people. And you know, Gloria Maria is one of those people that her presence was just, you know, is is good to see. Um, I think she transcended the transcended the idea of just you know, people would see her as just a journalist rather than a black journalist. She was somebody who uh, you just remember her reports. Now, just to get an idea of how important the figure of somebody like Gloria Maria was, um, I just want to take a look at a couple of headlines here. One of the most common terms that you hear when people are remembering her career is the word icon. You see Gloria Maria, the icon of TV, icon of TV dies in Rio, you know, an icon of Brazilian journalism. You know, dies the journalist Gloria Maria, icon of TV. So you see this all over the internet these days, right? The, you know, the trip, the tributes just keep pouring in. For example, you see, uh, she worked at Global for you know, more, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, her entire career. So you know, G1 is a global television website. She was a pioneer. It, it just numerous times, she represented the the potential of the black woman. She was the first black reporter to have a highlight on television, but she was once barred from entering a hotel through the front door. Now that's intriguing to say, because I've talked about this before, where in Brazil, hotels are a place of discrimination because, you know, if you look back at 70s American TV, you hear references about this, about black people having to come in through the back door. And this is something that used to happen in Brazil. and. You can go to a hotel today and they'll have two elevators. They'll have the, the elevator for people, guests who are visiting residents in the hotel. And then you have the service elevators for people who are cleaning the building or they're cleaning the apartments or whatever. And so the running stereotype in Brazil is that if you're a black woman in, entering a luxury hotel, you must be the service. You must be the maid. So you're supposed to take the service elevator. So this is what they're talking about here. Um, Gloria Maria was at once barred from entering into a hotel through the front door. Now, this <laughs> when you talk when we talk about Brazil, it's, this is something that's not supposed to happen. But again, this is this hidden history that you hear about the racist tendencies of Brazil. Um, so this is from the Estadão newspaper. It's probably the second biggest newspaper in the country behind Fordia. Um, the first black reporter on TV, Gloria Maria, was also the first to use the law against racism. Now, the law against racism in Brazil came about in 1951, and it actually happened because of an American dancer being barred from a luxury hotel, I think in Rio. I think that was uh, Catherine Dunham. So in a country that denied racism for so long, it took an African-American being discriminated against for the country to actually publicly recognize, yes, this country is racist, but it only happens every now and then, which is another lie. But it's saying here that she was, Gloria Maria was actually the first person to, you know, put the law against racism into action because of how she was treated. So um, what else do we have here? Again, this is a, you know, first black reporter um, to have a, you know, a prominent position on television. And so, you know, for the next few days, I can imagine that, you know, there's going to be a whole lot about Gloria Maria's uh, career on television. Uh, know the brilliant trajectory of, the, I would say, what the first black reporter on television. You know, so it goes to show, you know, <laughs> again, when you see some of these reports, some of these headlines, it's like, well, isn't Brazil supposed to be a racial democracy? So why, but if you use the words, you know, primera negra, primero negro, you find a lot of stories talking about the first black this or that in Brazil. And it's just, you know, it begs the question, if Brazil was never racist, why do you have situations where certain areas black people are not expected to excel or even have these positions? So again, you know, the study of racism in Brazil is pretty obvious when you start doing the digging. Anyway, um, so I wanted to, just uh, go through this story. Um, the feature today is courtesy of two Black Brazilian media outlets. One is called uh, Mundo Negro, the other one's called uh, Noticia Preta. One meaning Black World, the other one meaning uh, Black News. So let's get into this story for the day. Gloria Maria, one of the icons of Brazilian telejournalism, dies at age of 74. 
<laughs> now it's funny the, the the age of 74 because it's a it's an it's a going it's a ongoing joke where for years Gloria Maria didn't seem like she wanted people to know how old she was. And even though I didn't see an official report, I just kind of assumed that there were a couple of uh, estimates that were right about her age. And, you know, I said, uh, I think Gloria Maria is probably about five years older than Oprah, which is true. She was born in 49 and Oprah you know, was, was born in 54. That, you know, if, you know, if the, uh, the biographies online are true. So anyway, Gloria Maria was one of the most awarded professionals in Brazilian television news. She died on Thursday morning, January, uh, what is it, February the 2nd in Rio de Janeiro due to lung cancer, which she had been treating since 2019. At the Rio-based Rio -based television station since 1971, Gloria Maria is one, was one of the pioneers of live journalism on the Jornal Nacional news program. Between 1998 and 2007, she hosted the Sunday evening news journal Fantastico, and since 2010, she was responsible for special reports featured on the Global Reporter program. In a statement, TV Global reported the death of a journalist and lamented, it is with great sadness that we announced the death of our colleague, journalist Gloria Maria. In 2019, Gloria was diagnosed with lung cancer, successfully treated with immunotherapy. She metastasized in the brain, treated in surgery, also successfully Initially, the statement said, the note continues to recall the stages of treatment against the disease. In the middle of last year, Gloria Maria began a new phase of treatment to combat new brain metastases that unfortunately ceased to take effect in recent days. And Gloria died this morning at Copa Star Hospital in a Rio's South Zone. Um, you know, as I said, I um, just the last few times I saw Gloria Maria, she, you know, she looked a little bit sick to me. So I think this was, uh, you know, the cancer treatments was really starting to wear on her at this point. So just a few highlights of her career. And this is by no means, this is just, you know, just a few lines. I mean, if you wanted to talk about Gloria Maria's pro, uh, career tra trajectory, you know, I could probably do a couple of videos about this because, you know, a, a woman who's been to over 100 countries, you know, it's her her kid her children are gonna have so much to remember her by because obviously there's so many videos featuring her that are you know whether they're on YouTube or in the global TV archives, it's, they can just uh, flip through some of these videos and just see their mothers and their mother in various stages of her life. You know, in different countries, interviewing all these prominent people. So the professional Gloria Maria began her career at Global Heal in 1970 when there was no internet and to know the occurrences, one had to listen to police frequencies. In 1971, Gloria debuted as a street reporter while covering the collapse of a bridge that at that time was still in construction called Elevado Ingeniero Fresine. It fell over the Paulo G. Front, uh, Apology from Chin Avenue in Rio de Janeiro, leaving 48 people dead and several injured. Still at the Hedge Global Network, she worked at uh, Jornal, Oji, Bom Dia, Hill, and RJTV. Uh, this is a picture of her hosting the Fantastico uh, Sunday Evening News Journal. Like I said, it's, it's kind of like a 60 Minutes type of program. Uh, the one who taught me everything, this is Gloria speaking, the one who taught me everything, how to hold the microphone, how to speak was Orlando Moreira. The first film reporter uh, I worked with, she recalled in an interview with the program Memoria Global. The daughter of a tailor and a housewife, the journalist revealed that she was self-taught. Another image of Gloria Maria on the fantastical program. I studied in public schools and always stood out. I learned English, French, Latin, and won all the school's writing competitions, she said. Just uh, some images of Gloria Maria over the years. Remember when she first came out, you know, she was rocking a fro. Uh, looked like a few few times in, you know, her, her career, looked like she might've been having something like a jerry curl or something similar to it. Anyway, in 1986, she joined Fantastical as a reporter. In 1988, or 1998, she joined the bench and became anchor of the Sunday evening news program. 
through her visa electronico, she visited her visa electronica. She visited more than 100 countries, showing the world to her viewers. Between 2007 and 2009, she took a license from Global to dedicate herself to personal projects and returned in 2010, already a Global Reporter with special material. In 2019, the journalist Sergio Chapelin retired and Gloria Maria took over Global Reporter alongside uh, Sandra Annenberg. People noted just like I did when I, when I got that news, I had uh, told my, my daughter that morning, you know, today is uh, the day of Iamanja. And, you know, when I got in my car like an hour later and I was informed of this news, I'm like, wow, she passed away on the day of Iamanja. Again, the, uh, the goddess of the sea, the uh, Odisha of the sea in the, uh, the Yoruba and Kandomblé tradition. So when the news of Gloria Maria's passing hit the news, you know, obviously, not just black celebrities and personalities came forward, but you know the whole country. Just people were making, uh, uh, you know, were honoring her in their own ways. You know, throughout the country, <clears throat> just a few of these black personalities include Flavia Oliveira, a, a journalist on global television, Lazaro Hamos, who's probably arguably the top black actor in the country, and he's now a film director, and other black personalities mourn the death of Gloria Maria. Synonymous with competence, a landmark in the history of the country, an icon and inspiration were some of the words used by celebrities to describe the journalist on social networks. Famous colleagues mourned Gloria's death. Below are just a few of countless dedications to Maria. Uh, Anieli Franco is a well-known uh, activist, and uh, now she's a She's affiliated with the Workers' Party. She is uh, in the new Lula administration. She's the Minister of Racial Equality, if I'm not mistaken. Um, her, known, her, her name has exploded in Brazil over the last four or five years since the murder of her sister, Marielle Franco, in a, an assassination that, uh, that made world headlines. Uh, she was the real councilwoman who was murdered in like an execution style death back in, I think, 2018. Since then, her sister <clears throat> has taken over the uh, the Marielle Franco Institute. And as I said, she's, uh, she's affiliated with the Workers' Party and she is now the Minister of Racial Equality under the Lula da Silva administration. So she wrote, she tweeted, we have just received word that Gloria Maria has passed away. My sentiments to the family, anyone who, who is black knows how important it is to have seen her on television. Gloria is considered television's first black reporter and will always be remembered as synonymous with competence. Uh, the words of Ana Paula Santos, another global television reporter. Gloria Maria has inspired many girls of my generation. I had the opportunity to talk to her and say that the dream of being a journalist came true for me because she started a beautiful career with great courage. Every con conversation in the dressing room, I kept saying, Gloria, I love you. This is uh, what uh, actor Lazano Hamos had to say on his Instagram profile where he says, in a shock, in shock at the loss of this dear friend, you are a milestone in the history of our country. It was very nice to follow her work and even more to enjoy her pleasant company. I'll miss smiling with you. Thank you, Gloria. I love you. Now, Thais, this is Thais G. Verdaji. This, like, this is the real Thais. Thais Araujo being, uh, actually, she's Lazaro Hamos's wife. So the top Black Brazilian male actor in the top uh, black Brazilian actress, they are actually a power couple. So obviously she knew Gloria Maria also. She writes, it's hard to find words to say goodbye, but I have words to say what Gloria stands for. Power, intelligence, character, personality, identity, possibilities, travel, travel, vigor, good humor, laughter, dance, music, champagne, passport, world. That's it. Gloria changed my world, changed our world. And all the steps taken by her are followed by me and by all of us. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you very much. I love you, my friend. This is from, um, what is her name? Uh, Jacqueline, Dr. Jacqueline Goez. Now, I reported about Jacqueline, uh, the doctor, uh, Jacqueline Goez de Jesus uh, back in, you know, when the, at the time it was called coronavirus. And uh, 
Dr. Goez de Jesus, she coordinated a team of Brazilian scientists who sequenced the genome of the coronavirus or COVID-19 in 48 hours, a process that usually takes two weeks. Now, um, in, in this ongoing um, campaign to highlight the prominence of Black women, Jacqueline Goez, the Dr. Jacqueline Goez de Jesus actually had a, a Barbie doll, you know, uh, modeled after her that was released. I think it was just like a limited edition release, but, you know, that was a pretty important. Um, some years ago, I did a report where it shows like, in, I can't remember if it was two or five percent, something like that, two, five, seven percent of all the dolls that little girls buy in Brazil, only two to five percent are black. So seeing a, a dial made out of this scientist here, that's, you know, that's something to remember. Uh, let me get back to the story. So uh, Dr. Jacqueline Goya says, today Brazil has lost one of the greatest references in journalism. One of the, if not the greatest examples of representativeness I had on television as a child. She showed many of us black people that it was possible to occupy spaces. Again, she was she saying here, She's an example of representation that she had on television as a child because you simply didn't see many black Brazilians on TV in Brazil, on Brazil's television in those days. She inspires me with her intelligence, protagonism, and elegance. What a strong woman, what a legacy she leaves for us. Rest in peace. So here's one other one that I wanted to highlight here. Uh, this is the journalist, her, her actual name is uh, Maria Julia Cochino, they just call her Maju Cochino. So this headline says, uh, Maju Cochino gets emotional speaking about Gloria Maria and highlights the importance of the journalist. So this is um, Gloria Maria with um, uh, Maju Cochino. Maju Cochino is also a journalist on, on global television. I, I just remember watching uh, Maju through the years because I just, even, I think I, I still had a, global television at my home in Detroit. I think we had Dish Network or something. And um, I remember her starting like as a street reporter talking about, you know, Maju, this woman here. And I just saw over the years, her meteoric rise to some of the top spots in uh, on, you know, on global television. She became like the first black weather girl on the global news, the national global news television. I think it was like Journal National Now. You know, she was pelted with all this race, these racist comments when she first debuted on the program. Then she started moving into substituting for the anchors. So you just saw this progression in Maju Cochino's career. She's a very well-known uh, journalist. And she also sees in Gloria Maria somebody who opened the doors for her. What does she say here? Uh, let me see. I want to get up. She says she guaranteed that the veteran made her dream to be a journalist become a reality for other black journalists. So as you can see, I mean, there's a lot of people who are talking about how she opened up doors for black journalists. Um, Cole Anchor, uh, Geraldo Pereira, cries in his re emotionally, uh, well, his emotional report about Gloria Maria. Uh, just, you know, a lot of people are just remembering Gloria Maria and her, and her career. A lot of these people had the chance to work with her. Even the president, Lula, Lula was surprised by the death of Gloria Maria. So there's a lot of people that, that are paying homage to uh, Gloria Maria since her passing. So this message is from, uh, was it Flavia Oliveira, actually. She's another black woman journalist that's on global television. You know, a lot of these women feel this connection as when Gloria was doing their work, there were no other black women, uh, you know, who were working with her at the time. But nowadays you find a lot, still a minority, but you still see many more black female journalists on Brazilian television than you did when Gloria was doing it. She was like the one and only at the time, the first <laughs> and the one and only at that time. So Flavia Oliveira says, it's Gloria. Gloria Maria. The journalist departed this morning on February 2nd, the day of Iamanja. A reference in Brazilian television journalism, a reference to women journalists, a reference, a reference to black journalists, a reference, period. May Orun receive her in feast on this day of celebration and faith. My mother Iamanja welcomes you in the glory that you already are. 
my affection to her daughters, to the family, to the friends, to the colleagues, to the fans, will remember our darling forever. Now, just so you know, Olorun is what is considered as the supreme God, the supreme being in the Yoruba religious tradition. He's considered the, he's also known as Oladumare. And, and intriguing, as I say, there's a lot of Yoruba references in Black Brazilian culture, particularly in Bahia, where, you know, the God known as Oladumare, there is a famous uh, drum organization, uh, musical group and cultural group that's well known throughout the world. I think, you know, Oladum is, is called Oladum, which is taken from Oladumare. And they've been around for, I'd say, 45 to 50 years by now. Iemanja is an Orisha known as the goddess of the water in the Yoruba religious tradition and by extension, the Candomblé religion in Brazil. Iemanja is known as the mother of all the Orishas or deities in the Yoruba religious uh, belief. So um, this was just a, a short video. I'm quite sure I'll, I'll probably get to doing some other stuff because there, there's some great material out there about Gloria Maria. And from what I saw today, they said the uh, global television and that is actually making available many of her interviews throughout the year. So people can relive the, the, uh, the career of Gloria Maria through her reporting. So I'm just going to, I'm going to cut the video here, but as you know, Brazilian celebrities, very few are going to be known outside of Brazil. You have, you know, a few, a handful here and there, you know, you obviously Pele passed away. Um, a lot of people are familiar with Gisele Bündchen, you know, again, the famous Brazilian model who was married to the now retired <laughs> greatest quarterback of all time, Tom Brady. But I like to bring these type of stories because this, the story about Gloria Maria is very important. She's someone who should be recognized around the world for being, you know, a groundbreaking journalist in her time. You know, unfortunately, like Pele, cancer has, cho you know, picked another victim and, um, Gloria Maria passed away at the age of 74. So um, for those of you who speak Portuguese or you understand Portuguese or you just want to see uh, Gloria Maria doing her thing, just, just, you know, just go to, you know, go to Global TV, punch in, uh, no, I mean, go to YouTube, just punch in Gloria Maria, you know, Global, uh, Gloria Maria journalist or something like that. And you're sure to see some videos by Gloria Maria. So anyway, going to end the video here. And um, hopefully in the next few days, I'll get a chance to do a more, uh, detailed video about this uh, this excellent journalist who recently passed away. So if you learned anything from this video today, if you liked it, definitely uh, give me a like, a thumbs up. Uh, be great if we could have a conversation about just, you know, just leave your thoughts about what you thought about this article. Consider subscribing to the channel and uh, click the notification bell. So you'll be one of the first people to get my videos when I put them up. And with that said, hopefully I'll see you all in the next video that I post.